Hello, my name is Kevin Fox and welcome to the Advanced Design 2016 Service Pack 1 video showing a new feature which is traffic loading. The same functionality of Advanced Design continues and um, what I'm doing here is just we're putting in a slab, 600mm slab on a work plane. I've changed the settings of the work plane so it's got a finer mesh so you can just see uh, more you can be more accurate with the snapping so I'm just going to add in a couple of systems here for first one for supports and if you don't know there are lots of shortcuts in advanced design the one I've used here is F6 to create a quick subsystem and there is a link uh, below in the YouTube description for a shortcuts uh, document that's been created so I'm just going to create some dimensions as well just to give us some guidelines of where we're going to put our lanes as you can see we're, we're doing we're going to be doing this to Eurocode 1 and so you do have your standard lane width and remaining area and footways so you define all of those so I've just defined some dimensions to help me cut start and then you go to the objects and traffic lane which is the new feature so this traffic lane is a single line object and it has a left and right offsets which define the full lane width. You can also define a lane as being a footway lane or a normal traffic lane. So I've put in the two normal traffic lanes and now we're going to put in the two edge footway lanes. The remaining area is defined more like a uh, plate element so you actually define an area. Um, so you have to go all the way around the area in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction and press return when you've finished. And if I then just turn off the work plane you can see what we've created. So we've got two traffic lanes and we've got two footway lanes. So obviously you can still, say, the same principle um, applies, you can click on the objects and you can change the properties. So we're just going to put in a dead load and it automatically includes self weight and we're going to put in the new traffic loading. And so with the traffic loading, we've got a number of settings. As you can see, we have already got load model 1 and 2, and more are coming later in the year. Then we just need to define the carriageways, which is automatically, uh, the lanes, which is automatically done um, from what we've already put in, the remaining area and the footways. And then we simply automatically generate. And that's automatically generated our UDL. This is obviously all to Eurocode 1. Our UDL on our traffic lanes and our footways, and it's put in the tandem vehicle moving down the lanes on the other ones and again these are just standard lanes you can modify the loading if you wish obviously we don't advise that but you can modify the loading you can display it you can create views of this loading to put into a report later on it's also created envelopes so these are automatic so when you get results out you can go straight to an envelope results as opposed to creating uh, going to the envelope yourself and the combination, so you have to use a detailed combination mode and then it will combine it up with the dead load and any other loading you have. So on this example we're going to run a finite element analysis with a concrete design. So you can see now all, that was all done on the modelling mode and we're now in the analysis mode. So I'm just going to turn off the mesh and we're going to start displaying results. Obviously you've got all your standard results so you can have a look at. That's a deflection according to only the tandem vehicle at a certain position. And then we can look at the forces on the plate according to the envelope load cases. So we're going to look at MXX, moments around the x-axis, and that's a local x-axis. Um, so it's not the global, so note obviously the local is the red line there, so it's about the local x-axis. And then we can view the load case, uh, the envelope load case for whatever we want to look at. So we're looking at MXX for the plate maximum. And there you go, and then you've obviously, more critical probably, is your sagging moment in the middle, so that's MXX for the plate minimum so you just have to find that and then you can see all of these results and so there's our minimum bending moment uh, we can we're also going to run um, you can look at different results on here as well so we've got our support reactions um, same principle applies so you can look at any of the results according to the load cases that have been created and again you would want to look at if you want to get the worst case you want to look at the specific envelope that relates to the results that you are looking at And again, you can create views of all your results. It works in exactly the same way as um, Advanced Design, all the other features of Advanced Design. So you can do a full envelope as well if you wish. So this just does a full envelope of both, and there you can get the worst case bending. And now we can look at also the RC Design results. So this is now looking at minimum reinforcement in the um, X direction. 
and in the y direction and this is our required reinforcement area. So what we're going to do in this case is we're actually going to apply our own reinforcement to the deck and this can be done through the properties of the concrete object itself. So I'm just going to put on a minimum reinforcement everywhere of a certain value. So this is covering the whole plate. So we've got 16s at 250. And then we're going to also put a specific region. And so I'm just going to turn the work plane back on. And we're going to do a specific region that's going to have additional reinforcement. This, so this is over and above the minimum that we've already placed. So we can just place it on a specific region and then define the additional reinforcement that we're putting here. And then we can simply rerun the calculation and design. And now this is going to use the reinforcement that we've applied to that deck. And it's actually going to use it for the deflection and cracking checks as well, which is very important. So once that's run, we can have a look again at our results. So we can still get the standard results for the required reinforcement area in the um, X direction, in the local Y direction. And we also now have an additional reinforcement of real re um, result of real reinforcement. So this is the reinforcement that we have put in. And obviously we want to show the Y in the Y direction. And there you can see the reinforcement. So you can see the additional reinforcement you put in the middle. And it can tell you missing reinforcement. So this is the additional reinforcement we require over and above what we've already added according to the Eurocode 2 design checks. And obviously we want to have a look at the checking, at uh, the cracking. And again, we get the same kind of results out. We can get uh, either in millimeters or we can get a work ratio comparing it to 100% usage capacity. And this is all done based on the traffic loading uh, envelope that we've already put in. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Uh, more information can be found on our YouTube channel and there are more links below so you can have a look at that. And then please contact me, myself, Kevin Fox, if you need any further help.